everyone. Welcome to episode number 588 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. I have a very special extra episode this week in honor of International Women in Engineering Day. I have three awesome guests joining me. Don Verts from Kohler Energy, Sarah Bowen from Tektronics, and Rosa Chow from TDK. I sat down with each of these esteemed engineers and discussed their journeys into the world of high tech, how the EE landscape has changed over the years, and what they would like to see in the future of engineering. First up, I would like to welcome Don Verts from Kohler Energy. Hi, Dawn. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so first, Dawn, tell me about your journey in the world of high tech and what brought you to Kohler? You know, I started out this journey prior to 2006. I joined Kohler, now energy business. I started in 2006 as an assistant CAD design analyst, right? I was right out of college looking for a design role. And Kohler is basically in my backyard, right? It's it's seven minute drive, very close. Grew up in this area, and you know the company is very well known for longevity. And I was really looking for a long term company that would give me some career advancement and some opportunities. And quite honestly, I could not have picked a better company than Kohler, and specifically Power Energy. Over the last, I would say, you know. 15 to 18 years of my career, I've really had the opportunity to grow and blossom here within engineering. As I said, I started out in 2006 as an assistant CAD design analyst, quickly became the expert within the systems that we used. And within about eight years, I became the design team lead for that group. So I was leading the NPD design team for a number of years. And fast forward to 2020-ish, I took over the global engineering systems team which essentially is support systems within engineering, wearing quite a few hats throughout the day. So I do have responsibility over the NPD design team, technical publications, spare parts catalog, engineering data services. I mean, the list goes on and on, but it's been quite a journey here at Energy. Very empowering. I love it. Okay, so Dawn, during your tenure, how do you feel that the high-tech landscape has changed? You know, going backwards to when I started in 2006, our change management process was literally paper in triplicate, right? And we had someone that would walk around the business with that paper and ask for signatures for, you know, approval of this change or this new product release. And uh, guess what color we used folder for anything that was hot? Red. Red, right? So that was really where we were at in 2006. Now, fast forward to where we're at right now, everything is automated. We have made some leaps and bounds, at least within engineering at Power. A lot of our processes have now been completely automated. Everything is digital. There's no more walking around with papers, right? It's a lot of automation for our change management process, how we do design, iterative, regenerative design, how we bring and launch products to the market has all changed in the last 15 years. It's quite amazing. Absolutely. Now, what project or experience are you the most proud of in your career? You know, it's a little bit of a tough one. I've thought about this, you know, when I'm, I'm looking at my career and what I'm most proud of. I have passion for process improvement, for that technology piece. I don't take no for an answer. I don't settle for, well, we've always done it that way. You know, looking at efficiency and increasing our pace I'm always looking at process improvements. And if I look back on my career, I would say, you know, some of our global process improvements from connecting our ERP system to our PLM and PDM system, right? That data automation. So people aren't duplicating and triplicating all of the work that they do. I would say those are the things I'm most proud of is really keeping on track with technology and introducing that back to the work environment to empower people to be able to work on other things right? If we can continue to digitalize things, that frees up people's time to work on other things that they're passionate about. 
So it really kind of makes this full circle of technology and then learning and growing. Yeah, I love that. Dawn, what advice would you give future women engineers? The advice I give the most to my team and people that I mentor is get comfortable being uncomfortable. If you are not in that space, you're probably not learning and growing. And there are going to be times in your career that you are not in that space. And it's probably strategic, right? At that point, maybe you're not ready for a growth opportunity, but you know, especially for females in engineering, challenge yourself. You have a seat at the table for a reason. Don't second guess yourself. Your voice does need to be heard. You're there for a reason. Too often we sit back, we don't speak up. You know, we have maybe a little imposter syndrome going on. And I would say you were hired very specifically for a role, for a reason, and own it. Own your career. No one else is going to own it but you. So if you want to go after something, you go after it. Find your mentors, find your allies, network, and get yourself out there because you are your best advocate. I love that so much, Don. Okay, so what do you hope to see in the future of engineering? From my perspective, I'd love to see more females, more women leading technology and engineering fields. It's sort of a needle in a haystack sometimes trying to find women in this space. And I think we bring so much to the table from just idea orientation, right? And I would love to see more women leading in this space and just taking that spot at the table. All right, Dawn, it is time for your off the cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, It doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world. You need a passport to get there. What would you have? I would opt for Kadai Paneer. It's an Indian cuisine. It's very, very tasty. I'm a fan of rice. I love anything with rice. So I would definitely go for Kadai Paneer. What a good choice. Awesome. Well, Dawn, this was really cool. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for taking time with me. It was great to chat. My next guest is Sarah Bowen from Tektronix. Sarah and I were born and raised not too far from each other here in Oregon, and I would like to warmly welcome her to Fish Fry. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining me. It's great to be here today. Excellent. Okay, so first off, tell me about your journey into the world of high tech and specifically what brought you to Tektronix? So I was born and raised in Oregon, and I grew up in, you know, the 80s and the 90s where I wasn't really exposed to technology other than I remember I was in the Girl Scouts and there was this computer badge. I remember I had ones and zeros on it, and I decided I'm going to go do that. That sounds like fun. From there, my mom was a strong influence in buying me, you know, a computer and just things I could, you know, try out and have exposure to, which wasn't very common back then. And then in high school, I was looking at the electives. And back then, what do you take? I mean, there was home ec back then. I'm not even sure if home ec is an elective anymore, but I decided to take computer programming and I mean, it was pretty fun because in class, you got to make computer games and just do things that I hadn't been exposed to. And so I decided that, hey, this sounds like something I might want to do for my career. And so I decided to major in computer science. And from there, back then, the only real way to get a lot of exposure to local companies was they would come to your university and Tektronix was on campus. And I thought, well, that would be a cool place to work. Local Oregon-based company, me being a native Oregonian, I didn't want to leave Oregon. And so I interviewed for a position at Tech and was offered the position as a software engineer. And I really haven't looked back. I love it. Okay, so during your tenure at Tektronix, how do you feel that the high-tech landscape has changed? Okay, when I started in 1998, the, you know, internet and broadband, that was just becoming a thing. 
I can't remember exactly when I started if dial up was still, I think it was still the primary way to access the internet. So the biggest change is just the digitalization of everything that we do. I remember printing transparencies to present presentations at work and just struggling with the printer, getting those done at the last minute to share, whether it was like a code review or a design review. And I think that the internet, the access to data has really changed the tech landscape more than anything in my career. And of course, now with generative AI, that's the new big, you know, inflection really driving the tech industry and, you know, driving our customers, but also driving us and how we innovate in terms of internal productivity, but also how we add, you know, more value to our customers. So I'm going to go with the two big ones being at the start of my career with the internet and digitalization. And then right now we're in the middle of this big inflection point with uh, generative AI. For sure. So Sarah, what advice would you give future women engineers? My biggest advice would be to build a support network and to be very proactive and go for it. And I think that it's really important to have a group of other women that you can reach out to, talk through issues or challenges with, or, you know, talk about career development. And so for me, I personally have, you know, my small group of females that I work with and use as my support network. And I didn't really have that early on in my career, but I think it's invaluable, especially working through challenges that you may face in your everyday, not just your career, but your life in general. It's just great to have those uh, relationships. I agree. So here's a big one for you, Sarah. What do you hope to see in the future of engineering? I hope to see even further diversity and not just, you know, gender or race, but also economic background. I think that we still have a big opportunity to enable a bigger workforce through awareness in, you know, rural areas, areas where kids may not be exposed as much to technology. So I think there's a big socioeconomic component to really driving our future. I firmly believe that diverse teams are the best teams. And again, that also encompasses how individuals were brought up, the experiences that they have in life. That is great. I completely agree with you, Sarah. All right. Well, before you go, it's time for your off the cuff. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there. What would you have? I'm going to start with the wine. I'd have a glass of Pinot Noir from the Willamette Valley, of course, and grilled salmon. Very good choice. Times two. (laughs) Excellent. Well, Sarah, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Perfect. Thank you for having me. This was a great experience. Last but certainly not least, I would like to bring in Rosa Chow from TDK. Hi, Rosa. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Okay, so first off, tell me about your journey in the world of high tech and what brought you to TDK? I would say it started about the time when my parents got me an Intel 286, 8 megahertz PC. I was probably around 11 years old. I was coding in the Microsoft DOS uh, prompt and I didn't know what I was doing, but I was really enjoying myself until I made the PC went blue screen. And then thereafter, I took it apart. And I realized that it's really something I enjoy. Technology is something that I really enjoy. 
playing with hands on and the curiosity was really drive me into everything about technology. Then moving to maybe more in after high school, I was determined to study accounting. I was admitted into business school. I felt accounting in the first semester. And the business school coincidentally was right next to the computer science and engineering building. I walked over there and I thought to myself, like, this may be a place where I want to learn more a place where I want to spend more time, maybe the rest of my career. And lo and behold, I ended up in studying computer science and engineering. After I graduated from computer science and engineering, about maybe early 2000, the first decade, I started working in a pretty established semiconductor EDA company. On the side, I was working on a garage project and what we would probably call today IoT. I went to Radio Shack, I went to Fry's, I purchased microprocessor and electrical switch, and I hacked together a system where I was basically very, very tired of getting up every time when we need the lights on. And I thought to myself, well, why can't I just use my phone to turn on the lamps remotely? Then I used this system and I started building with my personal phone, which was a BlackBerry at that time. And I decided to uh, download the development platform and build a application that controls light. And because of this project, I came to know that I was very interested in consumer products. And I decided to join a company called InfantSense at that time. It was a late stage pre-IPO and thereafter was acquired by TDK. So that's how I was uh, brought into TDK. That's fantastic. Okay, so Rosa, during your tenure, how do you feel like the high-tech landscape has changed? I believe the software development in semiconductor has really become a very vital technology, not just in enablement, which means helping customers to deploy the product faster, such as building platform and SDK, but also improve quality easy to use software tools and building the infrastructure such that it is easy to iterate silicon design. But also it speed up the time to market because there are a lot of innovation. We're in a very fast paced, innovative technology era these days. And adding new features and spinning silicons is very expensive and it takes a certain development cycle. And with software be really baked into the silicon design, it really shortened the development cycle. By doing so, it saved time and hopefully saved money as well. Rosa, what project or experience are you the most proud of in your career? I see that the most recent project that I work with the team is putting machine learning models to our tiny motion sensor. And this project has been really interesting because Artificial intelligence, machine learning is a very huge topic. And I was very fortunate to have a very incredible, talented team that really look at the pain point of the end user. What is the problem that we're really trying to solve? And really, how do we turn those problems into machine learning methodologies? How do we turn raw motion data into something very useful? information, how you move and when you move and when do any of these movements actually matter. That really helped to increase and better the user experience. And not only that, understanding the application is one thing, but how do we streamline these applications into a tiny computer domain where we are consuming somewhere between 10 to 20, 40 microamp And that's where marrying the software and hardware piece, I thought this project was from end to end. I was just really proud of the team to be able to deliver such a low power, tiny computing, efficient and and sustainable product. All right. So, Rosa, what advice would you give to future women engineers? We all live in very busy lives and I guess men and women stay current with the technology trends. You know, try our best to continue to attend industry conferences, technology events, 
definitely, if we don't have the time, subscribe to tech news, listen to podcasts, prioritize learning. I think in these days and age, we have to keep up with the innovation and the trends. I think it's something that really dear to me. And the second part is, I think we're very fortunate to live during this time. As women, we have a lot more opportunities than, say, 40 to 50 years ago. I like to remind myself and maybe others that your achievement belongs to you. And definitely don't be shy to celebrate your success and celebrate more. This is something that I do and also tell my fellow women engineers as well. What do you hope to see in the future of engineering? I would like to see, and maybe let's back up a little bit, in the traditional engineering education schools, there are two distinct school of thought, which is hardware, electrical engineering schools versus software, computer science schools. And then there's everything in between that not oftentimes we learn in universities or in, in our college education. And a lot of times those were learned by experience, by coming out to the workforce. And I think for future engineering, I really would love to see these two disciplines to be taught in school as integrated curriculum. How do we design hardware for software applications that really solving real life problems? And how do we design software that really optimize the hardware and really exploit the best out of the hardware in you know, the most sustainable way? And I really believe, you know, have that infrastructure in place early on in our education system, and that will really help the future engineers to build the best in-class product. Excellent. All right. Before I let you go, Rosa, it is time for your off the cuff. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there. What would you have? I would like to have a mission and star experience in France. That would be it. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone would. That is a great answer. <laughs> well, Rosa, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. If you would like even more information about Kohler Energy, TDK, or Tektronics, I've included a bunch of links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If you're into X, you can monitor our tweets at eejournaltfm. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we are now on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. And, of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of June 26th, 2024, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried. <laughs> <laughs>